What if Minnesota could harness the potential in forest residue, agricultural waste, and invasive vegetation to produce efficient and clean-burning biomass-based fuel products? At the Natural Resources Research Institute, we've built a renewable energy lab to do just that. The process, called torrefaction, is a lot like roasting coffee. Maybe you like light roast coffee, it's not as concentrated, or you can take it further and have a dark roast coffee. We can do the same thing here. The technology is complicated, but the idea is simple. Raw material goes into a drying system before it enters a giant kiln, where it's heated to about 480 degrees Fahrenheit. The roasted material is then pressed into a variety of shapes to meet the needs of the energy industry. NRRI is also piloting an alternative system that is more like a pressure cooker. Hydrothermal carbonization eliminates the drying stage of the process, turning wet plants into a mud-like material that can be used as a binder that holds solid fuels together. Hydrothermal carbonization, as we say, or HTC to speak very shortly, is a process of uh, high temperature pretreatment of uh, biomass and other materials in order to produce uh, solid fuel, solid reno renewable fuels. We think this technique, um, with the pressure and temperatures that we're going to be using, actually makes some very interesting uh, products that uh, can take green biomass directly without drying and directly use it to create what we call an energy mud. The lab is also collaborating with an industry partner to develop liquid biofuels, like jet fuel. The Renewable Energy Lab and its capabilities for scaling from the lab to pilot to production facilities is unique in the United States. It provides energy-related industries the opportunity to test processes, reducing their risk and helping to ensure success. At this time, we, from our point of view, in terms of economics, it, it, it's the front runner in terms of uh, producing renewable fuels. It allows us to be at the forefront of actually development of uh, how you can take uh, you know, different biomass materials uh, ranging from cattails to uh, woody, woody materials to create an, an economic value so that you can better manage some of these resources. And they complement uh, our business. I mean, our background is mainly in petrochemicals and in process development. And one of the key things that NRI brings to it is their understanding of the front end of the process, uh, particularly in wood products, which we think will probably be the first uh, or most viable uh, biomass feed to be developed into renewable uh, liquid fuels. I like it because uh, we're doing something that I think will have an impact. Ultimately, this is a big step in moving Minnesota toward a bioeconomy built around excess biomass resources. It keeps money in the state and can help coal-based power plants meet their clean air standards. Here in the U.S., uh, we find this exciting because um, for people to develop back-end technology, there's no place for them to go. And I think that's one of the exciting things we find exciting in developing our technology in conjunction with the folks here at NRI, is that the center will actually be a magnet for drawing uh, those other businesses here to take advantage of uh, of what we put together. Funding to NRRI supports a variety of innovative research, from this renewable energy lab, to high value products for Minnesota resources, to environmental remediation and protection. We provide data for informed decision making and reduce the risk in pursuing new opportunities. It, it is unique. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any other institution like this with the mission that they have at NRI uh, in the United States. Visit nrri.umn.edu to learn more.